Welcome back to On the Horizon podcast, hosted by Jesse Sage and Melrose Michaels. First, thank you so much for becoming a premium subscriber and supporting our podcast. This is getting you extra exclusive, unheard, and unseen footage from each interview that we have on the horizon. So first, let's dive in with Ember Fiera. That's the one type of sex work that I haven't done. I'm like, I've mm-hmm. done all kinds of things except stripping because like that seems terrifying to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I can't dance. So there's uh-huh. that. <laughs> That's a big weird yeah, entry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Second of all, I don't like loud places. Mm. Um, <laughs> third of all, I want to talk to one person at a time. I can't like work a crowd. I'm an introvert. Like everything about it is like mm-hmm. not for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was definitely, it was like, honestly, the first time I did it, terrified. I was absolutely terrified. I, I showed up, um, I I was wearing, I, I had short hair back then. Um, mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't look fish. I, I, I look, you know, I look clocky or I look, um, you know, I look like a man or something. You know, just the internalized transphobia thoughts, <laughs> you know, so I show up with this like, really cheap shake and go wig that was like huge and it had these huge curls <laughs> and like I, I you know I'm, I'm a petite person I'm like five two and then it's like it was like down to my waist and I just looked like I don't know what I looked like I looked like a little <laughs> like a troll almost like a troll doll <laughs> um yeah and then I was like trying to do my thing I had no idea what I was doing and I didn't make any money my first night um and then at the end of the night like I took off this like ugly ass wig and the host of the night she was like don't you ever put that thing back on. <laughs> and then um, I was like, okay. And then like, yeah. And then like, I, I realized I was like, oh, it's it's okay to have a short hair, you know? And I was like, oh, I still look good with short hair. And I was just like, oh, I just need to like, not listen to what random people on the internet say about me. Um, yeah. Secret delay. Yeah. <laughs> secret, secret. <laughs> um, it was, it was a really cool strip club. It was like all just like trans women. Um, um, it was well except for the host she was like the cis woman um but you know she was so tall like I, everyone thought that she was trans i don't know um, but, like, um yeah it was just it was a really cool experience because you know i i had felt so you know being on the internet and just being young and just being trans it was like mm-hmm. i just felt so bad about myself i felt so bad about my body um i think like my my viral like poetry piece to go online was about how ugly I felt all the time and oh, like so, so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you know I like, yeah. but, like I literally just couldn't see it like I, I just couldn't yeah. see it you know I'm just like wrapped up in my own head and I'm like I was at this like very like conservative college and like I you know I was doing this like awful dance program where it's just like you know you have like teachers telling people that they're fat and then they're just like they don't know what to do with this person that's like transitioning in front of them and I just felt like I'm like literally going like tens of thousands of dollars into debt and I feel awful about myself and I was like oh and like professional dance is like not I was like I I can I can be trans I could be a professional dancer I cannot do both you know at least in the way that they were you know and the dance program and stuff like that so you know finding finding you know this little strip club finding that it was such a lifesaver for me because like when i needed money like i i was broke um i needed to pay for transition and stuff and like that was just nice you know um and then it was like i got to feel like i I don't know. I got, I got to just like really feel myself and I was like, Oh, I could just like make up a name. I can like do this little dance. And I got to like really understand why men are like attracted to trans women, like what they're looking for. And like, honestly, Mm -hmm. I used to be like so intimidated. I used to be so like, uh, like, I mean, there's a lot of very aggressive, scary Mm -hmm. men that want to hurt trans women. Like that's a reality. But then there's also just a lot that are just lurking in the shadows that like, you know, how, <laughs> like, you know, how these things, I was like, oh, like, you know, it's like, it's, it's so complicated. And I was like, I, I got to really build up my personality and really, you know, build up my confidence in myself. Actually, one of the things that you said, like, going back to like, kind of the beginning of our conversation is that, like, working in the club, like, gave you a sense of like, what it is that clients were looking for mm-hmm. in trans um, sex workers. And I was wondering if you wanted to speak a little bit to that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's all types of different things. Um, um, what are they looking for? I, <laughs> um, I, I think that, 
you know, okay, so trans people are very mysterious, very, very mysterious mm-hmm. to a lot of people. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think part of that's because like there's just not a lot of good media representation. I think the last couple of years, I'm really amazed, you know, with like mm-hmm. the way things have changed. Um, but you know, kind of the rise of social media has really kind of changed that game too. Um, but I think mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people have like really, um, you know, it's it's interesting because I think that you know most of the guys that are attracted to trans women identify as straight sometimes mm-hmm. bisexual sometimes queer sometimes gay um not as common but um you know it's it's like it's straight but it's also queer and mm-hmm. i i don't think that they have places to like talk to about it you know and i think that a yeah. lot of you know men are looking at porn and are interested right and they're feeling desires they're feeling you know stuff happen inside of them um mm-hmm. and i think that you know, a lot of times, you know, seeing a dancer, it, it's like, it was like confirming it for them, you know, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I remember, yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and like, I remember one of the first, one of the first times I was there, right, and I like, I walk over, I say hi to somebody, and then he like, literally runs out of the club, and I was like, oh no, am I scary? Like, did I, <laughs> you know, and I, I kind of giggled about it, you know, and stuff, so I, I think that that, that was kind of the thing, is that, it was a lot of people just kind of like trying to figure out themselves. And I, I think mm-hmm. that, you know, a lot of times as sex workers, a lot of times as trans people, um, you know, we're just, we're kind of mirrors for other people. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And um, yeah. And, and, you know, I think they project a lot of, you know, things onto us right. and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, it can definitely be quite annoying at times, but I also think that, you know, like I, I would love when I would see people just figure out things about themselves and get mm-hmm. to n- understand their sexuality, like on a deeper level and really just kind of like, I don't know, come away with like that personal growth. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm doing good in the world. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. a little bit of difference, you know, and I'm like, okay, maybe, you know, maybe down the line, he's going to have like a, you know, like meet like a really nice trans girl who like wants mm-hmm. to, I don't know, get married or do something like that. that I don't want to do, but like, you know, like <laughs> maybe, you know, they're going to meet and they're going to have a great life together or something. I don't know. Like, so like a lot of it, I just felt like it's, it's a little stepping stone, you know? And yeah. then me, I'm just, I'm such a voyeur. Like I, I love, people's I, I love getting to know people um you know I do a lot of writing I do a lot of like creative stuff and I, I just love just like I don't know I just I feel like there's things that people would tell me that they like never told anyone else in their life you know yeah. and I, I just I love secrets like you I know like, <laughs> sex work. I'm like I know everything that people do and I love that <laughs> <laughs> a secret keeper. Yeah, it's like part of the job. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a great perspective on it too. That's so yeah. true. <laughs> about all the inner dirty details. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It kind of shapes my perspective on the world though, because then I'm like walking around downtown or something, and some guy's wearing a like a suit, and I'm like. What's going on under that suit? Like, <laughs> what do you do on your lunch break? Yeah. I want to know, like, exactly what's happening. Is he like? That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> Next, let's take a look behind the scenes of our interview with King Noir. I'm curious because I know the viewers or listeners that are going to see this, they're still going to, or some of them, a section of them are still going to think like you're you're living this amazing life and you get to do all these things and it's the coolest thing they've ever heard of, which is true i'm sure and great but i'm curious as a man it doesn't suck yeah it's, it's all right but uh, as a man is there anything you felt has been disadvantageous to you in your career as a male in the industry because i feel like we don't hear about things like that uh, i mean I, I would definitely say that a lot of the things i do i'm not a freak because i'm in the industry i am sexually interested in all the things that i put on mm-hmm. film so i feel like mm-hmm. i will be doing most of it, I just have a better, uh, like, I'm connected to people who want to do the same shit. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So yeah. it's way mm-hmm. easier to get those kind of things in. But and, and I think that because of that, there is a certain view of anybody that's in the industry that, you know, we're filthy or in, in a bad way, not in a mm-hmm. good filthy yeah, way. Yeah. Um, that we... Uh, are uneducated or you Mm -hmm. know like we can't go 
get bank loans and say, yeah. hey, this is my profession and yeah. I'm looking to get a loan for a house or, you know, I think it's it's a lot of the same things that go across the board for anybody in our industry. But I mm-hmm. do think that there there aren't many things that I can say that are on the level of what women and and trans women have to deal with in the industry as a male. I, I can't really say that there's a comparative level with that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You said that most of your clients are women and we have this perception that like there aren't women clients, like that there isn't a market sure. for that. So I was wondering like how you, um, how that, how that happened for you and what your relationships with your clients look like. Yeah. Uh, well, like I said, at first I got started primarily with couples mm-hmm. and, I think from there, some of the wives told their friends and it kind of just branched (laughs) out like that. Um, Uh But then also I used to do parties in New York and New Jersey. Uh, I was an erotic, erotic touch masseuse. And Ooh. basically, the reason <laughs> well, the I, I came up, where, where you did what? Like, that's a thing. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, I actually see more people doing it now, but um, this was maybe like 10, 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, a lot of male reviews, in my opinion, were created by men who thought what women wanted was the same as what they would have wanted if they were women. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> that makes yeah. sense. Right. Yeah, yeah. So it's like not every woman wants to go to a, a club and have some stranger put their dick on their shoulder. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I wanted to create a space that was more sensual, more romantic and more catering. Like if you do want a dick on your shoulder, you can get that dick on your shoulder. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But if you don't want my dick on your shoulder, there's a whole lot of other things that can I've be done. I've actually never thought of having a dick on my shoulder. <laughs> this is the first time it's yeah. the first time it's crossed my mind. It's never like a thing I've thought of. No, but when you say and, like and, like, and that's that's the thing. Like a lot of times people will go to to um because like I, I've danced both strip and go-go in clubs as well. And it's like people will say her, her, her. And she's the one that's like, no, no, yeah. don't pick me up. And if someone is saying no, no matter where you are, no matter what the, the circumstance, no means no. Leave them yeah. the fuck alone. Yeah. Right. So so being in those kind of settings, I was just like, there's got to be something else. Mm-hmm. So I started I created my company, Sensual Noir, to be kind of like catering to uh specifically at that time, because this is in my neighborhood and my community, was mm-hmm. to black and brown women who didn't want to be in that kind of setting where it's just like, you're in the crowd, you can be in the crowd. You yeah. don't have to participate. You yeah. don't have mm-hmm. to be brought up. So um, that, and then also um, a lot of people, they, they find massages to be romantic and sensual. Mm-hmm. So I started doing kind of like themed massages. So like you could have a BDSM massage where we involve sensory deprivation. And, wow. you know, if you want to be flogged on a massage table or spanked and things like that. Or I did one with uh, strawberries and whipped cream or hot, hot candle wax and ice. Mm-hmm. And it was like a whole different experience. Yeah, that's cool. So, that's really- you know, I, I think from those parties, then I started getting more private clients because mm-hmm. they were like, OK, he's not going to go beyond where I'm comfortable. Yeah. So exactly. it, it kind of just started branching out for me from there. And I think, you know, word of mouth in any industry and in any profession is always the best advertisement yeah. you can get. So I, there are women out there. And I, I do think those society tells women that if you pay for something in regards to sex or even your own pleasure that mm-hmm. somehow uh you're less desirable yeah but if men do it you have power yeah you know exactly. what i'm saying so mm-hmm. I, I definitely always have said to, to my clients like this is you ex- 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 um exercising your power yeah, yeah. You it's know, also like self-care is- yeah, yeah, for yeah. Sure. I would totally pay for an erotic massage. Like I wouldn't yeah. see any reason why, like, that's great. Cause then you can be like, this is all about me and yeah. what I want. And but also, when do you do that? <laughs> we see that context. And so yeah. it's just in language, like, oh, he's assertive, she's bossy, or he's, you know, yeah. he's in charge. She's a bitch. So like, yeah. that's just that exactly. double standard built into society right now. And it's, and it's the same thing. And if you're getting a full service provider um, situation as well, like you want it this way and you don't have to worry about yeah me mm-hmm. unless you want to yeah you know what i'm right. saying i'm here to please i'm here to please yeah. you 
Mm -hmm. And and it's the same thing with like BDSM sessions. Like this is you're setting this up. It's not like you're trying this with some somebody who's never done it before. So you don't know if you're fully safe um, or somebody who who doesn't care about your your pleasure. Your pleasure is my pleasure in this particular situation. You know, yeah. I think too, this is because a lot of times I've, I've had this conversation before is like, you know, porn in the adult industry often just imitates what's the society. Like this is, this is literally a mirror for what's actually happening in present day. Mm -hmm. And people don't like to give that Mm -hmm. credit because they think it's showing them the bad sides of themselves when really it's like, this is just the side of yourself. Like this is what (laughs) it is. Um, But I also want to kind of ask you like, what are your personal experiences with, with race coming into, you know, your adult industry business and like things that have impacted you directly, like anecdotal. (laughs) Directly. I hmm, craziest experience personally, not even just for my business as Mm -hmm. as a, as a whole, uh, I was filming in Iowa of all places, um, (laughs) in, in Des Moines for a company in Des Moines. Um, And they had like a a bunch of us staying in a, in a, like a model house. Mm -hmm. And we felt, we finished filming and usually I'm done filming, you know, I'm going to get back to the rest of my life. You know what I'm saying? Even though I'm in this model house, you know, I got to still handle things at home and and make sure my fam is good and things like that. And she's kind of like the, the, other performers like, Hey, like let's fuck some more. And I was like, nah, you know, I'm good. I'm about to check on my family or whatever. So I go, go into my room and she wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed because she's trying to text our agent and winds up texting me and says, King is being an uppity nigger and won't have sex with me. Wow. And this performer, she she still is performing now. She's been hired to work with other black men. And, you oh know, I, I, I spoke about it. And overall, the industry didn't didn't really uh, respond in a way that that I would think a workplace environment should. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I, I, I told the company like they never released the scene uh, to my to my knowledge, but they definitely tried to talk me into still working with her. They were like, come on, it's not that bad. and all that kind of shit. Like, nah, it's that bad. Yo, like, (laughs) Um, so I think about that. Um, I think about the fact that Jasmine and I, and Jasmine and I have won three, uh, FETCON awards, Mm -hmm. two for best full length feature and one for like, I guess it was like a short feature. No companies have ever reached out really to Jasmine to direct for them mm-hmm. or reached out to me to do editing for them mm-hmm. or reached out to me to do, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. if, if we were white and mm-hmm. had that kind of response, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that there would be a, a different reaction, you know, mm-hmm. um, do you feel like the industry is more comfortable with you as a performer than as uh, someone in a, like executive, like a pr- as a pr- producer or an editor or these kind of more, I don't know if they're higher up roles. They're just more, I don't know. Like yeah. more behind the camera yeah, stuff. Yeah, like Definitely. I mean, I, I, if you look at the percentages, yeah, I think it's only started to change a little bit in regards to having more women behind the camera. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. And, and even that it's been more, directing than camera work yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. or editing you know Mm -hmm. because now it's equipment yeah women know how to push (laughs) buttons i don't know you know what i mean like it's it's some wild shit and it's it's really unfortunate because you know there it's 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 perpetuated over and over again because it's like well none of the top directors are black but you don't hire black people. So how yeah, could yeah. there be any of the top right. directors be black? Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and, and there's starting to be other people I see breaking through in some mainstream, uh, in some mainstream situations and, and knocking that shit out the fucking park. Yeah. And, and really it's like one of those things where it's like, white people will be like, why does everything have to be about race? Mm-hmm. And black people, we feel the same fucking way. Yeah. Except mm-hmm. 
you're annoyed by it, we're held back by it. Last but not least, let's listen to the exclusive from our chat with Dulcinea. There needs to be a lot more of that where, not like of that, no, but when artists or like even TV shows, because mm-hmm. you look back and like past season, like Friends is a big problem area yeah. of this where they've said and done things and made skits about things that in modern day, you know, progression of where we are, yeah. like you can't be doing that anymore. Like putting Monica in a fat suit over yeah. and over again. I'm like, yeah. Mm-hmm. The way that they treat trans people in the show too. So yeah. if if these people or artists or produce, producers can come forward and be like, you know what? Things have evolved. Like we need to take that off air and just leave that where it, let it die. Like let it be in its pocket of time and who saw it who saw it but we've evolved and we're gonna do away with this like more artists on the radio and with songs and stuff can be like i don't want to cash a royalty check off of that piece anymore because now we've all evolved and seen the mistake that this was yeah and it's time to move forward so like if more people would step up and own stuff like that and like let their art evolve with time i think that would be really really important i'd like to see that more yeah i think just to acknowledge i mean uh, (sighs) I'm not trying to cancel anyone. And the thing is, the truth is, yes, times were different. Like, I loved The Who. I thought it was adorable and funny and hilarious when Keith Moon and John Lennon would dress up in Nazi uniforms in the 1970s and go terrorizing people in, like, the Rainbow Room in Hollywood because it's just, like, they were rubbing elbows with other rich celebrities and making them uncomfortable, and it was funny. Mm -hmm. It was just the edgelord humor, basically. It's like the 1970s version of edgelord humor. And, um, you know... uh, the thing is, is like, what, what I have kind of changed about on the t- over time is just like, when, okay, like, it's just, I don't necessarily feel inclined to celebrate humor that uh, generates such a cringe. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, like it's like watching old episodes of South Park too, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and it's just like, oh, that doesn't hit the same way that it hit in 1997. Yeah, you know? and then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. then, then like sometimes you're like, oh, this is a new episode, <laughs> like. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's just like, oh, but they're they're sad. they're making fun of the bad guys, and it's like, but yeah. also if something can be taken so out of context, and it's like a short clip that gets retweeted around the world by the people that think it's the honest context, like that yeah. has been a huge yes. uplift in yes. the yes. landscape mm-hmm. of misinformation. Yeah, yeah. So let's like move into like I think that that history was like really interesting, yeah. and um, especially because like the way that you're talking about this, I'm thinking like, we're roughly probably around a similar age, given like when all of that happened. But I think that like, hearing that, like how all of that went down, like from your perspective, and how it impacted the way in which people sexualized you, I'm wondering, like, how, how have you seen this, like in your work? So you eventually started doing like sex work, how like, Mm -hmm. have you seen it in your work? And do you feel like, do you feel like those images, um, do you still see that in your in your clients or in what they like? And is it amplified? Like, are those? I don't accept clients who fetishize yeah, Asian yeah, women. Period. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's such it's like a, such a turn off from the first message. Yeah. I'm just like block. Um, yeah. But yeah. at the same time, um, like you know, myself and a lot of other Asian sex workers, we don't have to erase our Asianness. In yeah. order for other mm-hmm. people not to fetishize us, and we shouldn't right. have to, um, because and and this, I bring this up because this is the pushback that I get when I mm-hmm. post something like if I post myself in a kimono or if I post myself in my uh, monastic robes, which is controversial, but um, <laughs> but uh, but or if I celebrate my Asianness and if I celebrate my Japanese heritage in a post or in my content or you know. Um, uh, evoke imagery um that is reminiscent of japanese art or something Mm. like that and then they're just like well you advertise yourself as japanese so you know how do you expect people to not be attracted to that like you're inviting people who want that and it's just like Mm. well that and it's a very victim blaming and it's very you asked for it and it's gross um so there's that but um you know i can kind of tell right like you know i 
there's dating profiles on Tinder that it's just like, I want a hot little tight Asian spinner. I'm like, that's not me, (laughs) you know? Um, and, uh, just the language, it it can be really dehumanizing. Um, Mm -hmm. obviously, uh, to be reduced to, um, either like the innocent, you know, Lolita Japanese girl, like so small or like the, you know, the term LBFM that you come across on porno. LBFM is um, little brown fucking machines. And that is the term that white sex tourists use to describe like, you know, going down to Thailand and getting some LBFM. Yeah. If you, if you, uh, you know, fall down that, uh, you know, the, the Thai, tourist porn and like, you know, teenage Thai prostitute porn on Pornhub. Um, mm, wow. It's ugly yeah. and it's gross. Yeah. And like the girls, you know, yeah, they look really young, but uh, also they look really unhappy and really uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. And, and that again, it's just like, those are um, relatively large ish production companies and so yeah. i'm sure that they're going through the right channels and you know that the yeah. models are of age and they just happen to look young and all that stuff but and also you do see the same girls appearing in the same content yeah. over and over again over time yeah. so um but the thing is is like you know y- you want to stick up for an industry um where uh, adults are allowed to make their own choices and yeah. um, create and also consume the content, you know, as long as nobody's getting hurt. Um, but like, there's stuff like that where it's just like, you know, these hot little brown fuck holes and, you know, like slanted yeah. pussy and all these other, it's so gross. Um, yeah. So it's hard to yeah. see things like that and um yeah. and all, you know what i mean it's just like well where do i fit in in my content yeah. i don't want to mm-hmm. contribute to anything that's going to um attract clients you know like no one's coming to me mm-hmm. because they want to see like you know teenage thai girls you know whatever yeah. <laughs> but like so your content has like such a high um artistic value yeah. so like it makes sense like it's beautiful um and it makes sense to me that like you would incorporate the things from your heritage like for like both for like your because it's coming out of identity, your own identity yeah. but also for like the aesthetic like you know Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And so Japanese it's, aesthetics are beautiful. You, it's, it's not just beautiful. I mean, that's all I was yeah. trying to say is the aesthetics are beautiful. Your aesthetics are beautiful. It's very curated. It's very nice. It's interesting to me that somebody would come in and be like, oh, that's the same thing as this other thing. So yeah. like we, um, you must want to be fetishized for that. Like it, that's hard for me to wrap my head around because that's like, no, I mean, that's not how I look at your stuff. Mm. <laughs> no one that is familiar with my work approaches me with that in mind. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm talking more about like uh, in the civilian world, how I'm approached. We hope you enjoyed this bonus footage from this episode of On the Horizon. And we look forward to having you tune in next time.